What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steve Runner here and welcome back to another video. And today I'm sharing with you guys the top five workouts that help me break three hours in the marathon and will hopefully help you. So the workouts I'm about to share I did in abundance in the build up to my second attempt and my successful attempt at breaking three hours in the marathon running two hours 59 minutes and 44 seconds I believe so I'm going to share those with you today I know breaking three hours can be such a big thing for so many runners and it's such a big and lofty goal so hopefully these workouts will help you guys in your training and help you achieve and get that right side of that three hour marathon mark so if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and let's kick start with number one so my first workout I want to share with you guys is a long continuous marathon pace efforts we're talking 8 10 12 14 miles worth of marathon pace in one go in one run with a nice warm-up and cool down either side I've had a couple of more successful marathons one when I broke three hours and then of course one when I uh, I ran my PB of 244 and although that training for the 244 was slightly different I was doing a longer stints of marathon pace efforts albeit it was just on hillier terrain because at the time I was training for a mountain marathon but when I ran the 259 I was doing 8 10 12 mile marathon pace runs I just find and it's something that I'm incorporating into this current marathon training block that when you have chunks of marathon pace broken up with intervals although it's great and the adaptations are good for you I find that I can go ah it's okay I've got a couple of minutes rest shortly I can ease back off and then go again my body gets a bit of a break you find that if you have a continual long marathon pace stint then you're going to adapt better personally from a mental perspective because your body goes okay you're always questioning yourself can I hold this for 26.2 miles I'm eight miles into this marathon pace tempo how does it feel does this feel manageable does it feel too hard do I need to adapt things and it just gives you an overall sense of how achievable that marathon pace is so for me personally that was one of the massive reasons that I broke three hours and the second workout that I want to talk about is hilly or undulating interval based runs and also tempo runs as well now you'll hear me talk about hilly intervals undulating intervals on trails on different terrain a lot on this channel I swear by them I feel like you get the benefits of working by effort you get the benefits of understanding your body because you're working not by pace but you're understanding that going uphill you have to back off downhill you can maybe put your foot down and then on the flat you're judging how you're feeling at that point it just gets you a little bit more in tune with your body but one specific thing that I was doing a lot during that build-up was actually a four mile uphill tempo run so around here what we have is we have the Forest of Dean cycle track it's a phenomenal nine mile route and it's like a circle but it's on a slant so I end up starting up here because I live around here somewhere and you kind of run along and down and when you get to the base here you have four miles of gradual uphill so what I was finding myself doing is I was doing intervals on that cycle loop so I was doing some fast downhill some fast uphill but I'd also take Take it easy to the downhill and then at that four mile point I would then do four miles uphill and I did that workout about two or three times and I was doing that at a good tempo effort again you find just with those gentle uphills they just without you really knowing build up that leg strength which just is what you need in that back end of a marathon so not only was I doing hilly undulating intervals like I always do but doing those longer uphill stint tempo runs really really helped too and the third workout that I want to talk to you about today is a specific long run workout so you'll hear me talk about long run workouts all the time I've done a fair few videos of them on the channel and discuss my favorite ones but the ones I was doing in the build-up to when I broke three hours was faster finish long runs second half faster it's actually something again that I've adapted into this current training block I just went out this weekend and I did a long run three loops and I was just trying to gently progress each loop so that I was finishing slightly faster every time if I scroll back to 2018 when I broke three hours and look at my Strava and you guys can go and do that as well you'll see there's a couple of types of these faster finish long runs that I was doing number one is where I was doing sort of eight nine ten miles easy long run and then after that mark I would then put my foot down and do five six seven miles hard and it was not at any specific pace it wasn't at goal marathon pace it was just what my body could handle at that time I can see from Strava the pace is fluctuated but I can see the heart rate goes up so I was putting 
putting in an effort in that second half of the long run. And those periods were between, as I said, five to seven miles. So I'd usually do 10 miles easy and then tack on five, six, seven at the end that were a good hard push. The second type of fast to finish long run I was doing was again, eight to 10 miles easy. And then I was doing things like intervals at the end, like eight by three minutes hard and then two minutes back to easy pace, effectively surges. Surges at the end of my long run. Again, this is all on Strava. You can go and check it out. And again, I noticed I took that first half very, very easy, got those first 10 miles done, very relaxed, and then put the hammer down at the end. This is all in preparation for that second half of the marathon. So those are a couple of different long run, long run workouts that I was doing that kind of come under the umbrella of fast to finish. And as we all know, threshold work is such a key part of working through marathon training. It just helps complement everything we're doing around it with easy runs, with our long runs, with our tempo runs, everything. Threshold work is such a big component. So workout number four, and something I was doing so much of week in, week out, leading up to me breaking three hours, was indeed mile reps and K reps. I was doing eight by a K, and I was doing four by a mile, five by a mile, and six by a mile. And these were all strategically placed throughout the block. Uh, and they were all kind of in a progressive format. So four miles was back at the beginning and I finished I think on six or seven by a mile. Now these were all with jog recoveries. I don't think the recoveries were particularly short. I think my mile reps were like two minutes uh, jog recovery and I think my K reps were around 90 seconds. But I just find that having that longer threshold effort. So for example, if I was training for a 10K, I might be doing two minute intervals, three minute intervals maximum, but around that one to two to two and a half to three minutes in that shorter range. Well, for marathons, I'm trying to elongate that a little bit and work a little bit harder for longer around that threshold effort. And I just found that those areas, those workouts in particular, complemented the training so well. And week in, week out, I just remember feeling stronger and stronger on the long runs. And the fifth and final type of run that I want to talk to you about today is the hilly, easy long run. So again, just like everything else we've talked about in this video, all through these workouts, they all play a part in combining for this kind of magical marathon marathon training formula. And the hilly easy long run is no different. If you are disciplined and you can keep your easy runs easy, especially when you go to the hills, because it's very easy to get to the hills and just kind of push a little bit harder because you're not used to dropping the pace so much. You are, you do have to work by effort and you do have to kind of take, dial things back a little bit. Let Leave the ego at home and just kind of simmer down a bit and just take them nice and gently. You're just going to build strength as you go. A little bit like the undulating intervals. You're just gently adding that strength in there without you even even having to think about it. it's hardening up the legs and the hilly easy runs are absolutely no different the combination of this combined with everything else really does make the magic combo and I think a bonus tip for me to mention here, a sixth and final thing is going to be saying don't get carried away with by the fact that you might have run a certain time for a half marathon and then hopefully that means you can then extrapolate that, add 10 minutes and then you'll run a certain marathon time because I found from personal experience it just doesn't work like that. For a lot of people it can, they're very lucky, they've got that speed endurance, they've got that engine there and they can take their half marathon time, they can double it and then they can add 10 minutes and then that will give them a rough marathon time. Time. For me, it's always more more like being 50, add 15 minutes to 18 minutes. That's kind of where I've been. So my half marathon PR going in to my sub three hour was 120. So if you think about that, I went ran a 120 and then I ran a 240 if you doubled it. And then that's 20 minutes. That took me an extra 20 minutes on top of that. Now I have refined things slightly over time, uh, but not that much. I'd still say 15 minutes is a safer option for me to bank on. And for someone at the moment that has a 115 half PR, I'd be looking at potentially running a 245 and below, hopefully a little bit quicker. But of course, you know, we don't know what conditions are going to be like on the day. We don't know how we, our bodies are going to react and how we feel in that taper week. So there's so many factors that go into race day that we just can't uh, control. But just bear in mind, if you run a half marathon, it's great to get two or three under your belt. In my opinion, that are really sub 125, sub 124, 
ideally sub 123. If you're in that region, then you stand a really, really good chance of breaking three hours. So there we go. Those are my top five workouts to hopefully help you guys break three hours yourselves. And the question for you and for the people out there that have already broken your three hour uh, marathon mark, going back to that previous question, what was your half time before you broke three hours in the marathon. I'd love to know kind of where you were at within your half marathon journey because I've heard a lot of people that only ran 127, 128 and then still went on to run a 258 and 259 which is absolutely amazing but I also hear a lot of people say they have to break 80 minutes in the half marathon to then even consider going sub three hours. So I'd love to know for those of you out there that have already done it what your time was in the comments below. But yeah I hope you've enjoyed this one guys. If you do please do leave any comments. Let's get that discussion going and for those those of you who have already broken three hours make sure you drop a workout down below to help other people out that you really found helped you in your build up if you enjoyed today guys please do give this one a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always i'll see you in the next one until then